Hello everyone. Today in this lecture, I am going to talk about the layers of GI tract. So as we discussed previously, also that GI tract is the gastrointestinal tract or the alimentary canal that extends from our mouth and it ends till our anus. So this GI tract is a hollow tubular structure through which the food is passes through uh, various processes. And finally, we are getting nutrient and we are eliminating our waste from our body. So here in this lecture, I am going to give you a brief description about uh, the walls of GI tract. So all together, there are the basic four layers uh, which extends from esophagus till anus. But yes, there are some modification in these all layers depending on their function. So it can be uh vary from structure to structure but basically these these are the four layers uh, that is from inner to outer or you can say from deep to superficial so the innermost one is the mucosa then submucosa which covers the mucosa superficial to that is muscularis and the outermost one is the serosa okay so let's talk about the mucosa so mucosa is the lining that uh, encloses the food Okay, so this is the lining which faces the lumen. Lumen is the hollow structure. Yes. So suppose this is the tube, then the lumen is the hollow space. Yes. And the food is passing through this hollow space. So the innermost lining which faces the food is the mucosa. And the mucosa again divided into three. Innermost is the epithelium, then is the lamina propria, and the outermost one is the muscularis mucosa. So the epithelium of this mucosa is also varies from structure to structure depending on uh, their function. Like if we are talking about the mouth uh, and the pharynx where we are ingesting our food. So there is more chance that because of these hard substances we can enjoy our lining. So there this mucosal epithelial, epithelial lining is specially made up of non keratinized stratified squamous epithelial layer why because stratified means multiple layers squamous means flat cells so the lining of uh, mouth pharynx is made up of multiple layer of flat cells that protect our lining from being damaged by the hard food substance okay but uh, as same in anal area also uh, in anal, anal area also there may be a chance of damage by hard stool so there also it is made up of non keratinized stratified squamous epithelial lining but in rest of the tract like especially in the stomach or in large intestine or in small intestine the lining is made up of simple columnar epithelium simple means there is a single layer of column like cells okay because there the function is digestion and absorption yes so it completely depends on the function the organ playing okay and the cells are usually tightly packed because they prevents any leakage from them and along with that there are some uh, exocranial glands are also there which are situated in between these cells which releases continuous their secretion directly into the lumen Okay, so these are the exocranial cells. So this one is the epithelium of mucosa. Now the next layer which comes after this epithelium is the connective layer that is called lamina propria that support this epithelium and bind it with this muscularis mucosa. So this lamina propria contains many blood vessels and lymph because uh, whatever the food we are eating the nutrient direct directly receive in these blood and lymph so uh, the nutrient directly receives in these structures which which are situated in the lamina propria okay and along with that it also contains some lymphoid tissues also that protect us that gives us immunity so these are called malt mucosa associated lymphatic tissues okay now after this lamina propria is the a uh, thin lining of muscle smooth muscle that is called muscularis mucosa so this muscularis muscularis mucosa throws the mucus into many folds directly into the lumen okay and it increases the uh, 
surface area of wool mucus lining so if the surface area will be more then there will be more chance of proper mixing and there is uh, more chance of absorptive cells to directly expose to the food content and absorb all the nutrient so these are the three layers in the mucosa and the innermost one is the epithelium that directly faces the food okay this is the layer which directly comes in contact with food okay so these are the three lining the deepest most layer in gi tract that is mucosa now superficial to that is the sub mucosa that is sub mucosa this layer also contains many blood vessels and lymph within them because whatever the nutrient is absorbing here that reaches there okay and along with that some lymphatic tissues are also there and this lining is made up of connective tissues which binds mucosa to this muscularis layer because it is lying in between these two layers yes and this is the connective tissue layer and especially very important as you can see in this figure that there is a network of nerve fibers so this is called the plexus and as it is lying within this submucosal membrane or the wall this is called submucosal plexus or you can say misner's plexus so that is very important that we'll discuss later so after the submucosa the lining or the layer which comes uh, over this layer is the muscularis okay so muscularis means the muscle and how many muscle there you can see here two the inner one is the circular muscle fibers and the outer which cover the circular is the longitudinal okay so suppose if this is the gi tract then circular muscle fiber runs along the circle of this whole tract and longitudinal muscle fiber runs along the length of this uh, whole tract okay so on this cross section you can see as an round structure of this longitudinal muscle fiber but some exceptions are there like in stomach there is one more additional layer that uh, uh, that is innermost is the oblique one that uh, that will discuss later when we'll deal about the stomach now this lining is also varies according to the structures function like uh, if we talk about the mouth or pharynx there mainly skeletal muscle fibers are there there is no smooth muscle fibers but in rest of the tract mainly this lining is made up of smooth muscle so why we required skeletal muscle in mouth pharynx or anal region because if we are taking food then we chew it properly and on our voluntary control itself we push that food toward the pharynx okay so it is completely under our control so that's why it is made up of skeletal muscle fiber like our limbs okay skeletal muscle means it is completely under our control so if you want to move your limb you can do it so likewise if you want to propel your food toward the pharynx then you can do when it is made up of skeletal muscle fiber only okay so that's why it is made up of skeletal muscle fiber and same as in anal part also if you want to defecate you can or if you want to postpone it you can because again it is under your voluntary control okay but in rest of the tract it is made up of smooth muscle okay so the inner one is circular and the outer one is longitudinal and most importantly as you can see in this figure again there is another network of nerve fibers here so this is the again second plexus that is called my entric plexus my means muscles and this my entric plexus lying between the circular and the longitudinal muscle fiber this one is the submucosal plexus that was lying in the submucosa but this is the my entric plexus that lies between between the two muscle layer okay so this is also called as or back plexus and these two plexus plays very important role because combinedly they form a part of ens entric nerve supply or entric nervous system okay so these two plexuses are the part of entric nervous system it means this gi tract has its own brain to control the activities of whole gi tract that is 
the motility of gi tract the secretions released from various cells this all under the control of ens that all will discuss in next video now next come to the point because we are talking here about the walls so the outermost superficial layer is the serosa so it can be called as serosa or it can be adventitia but where it is located depends on that it is to be called as these two name so the structures of gi tract when we when they are lying within the peritoneal cavity then only uh, their outer lining to be called as serosa like uh, stomach small intestine these all are covered with the serosa Uh, with a simple squamous epithelial lining and connective tissues these are the two linings which made up of serosa or also called as the visceral peritoneum because these are lying within the peritoneum so whatever the organ lies within the peritoneum is the visceral okay and it is also called as mesothelium so the simple squamous epithelium plus annular connective tissues made up of mesothelium okay but the structure which lies outside the peritoneum means they are not the part of the peritoneum then they are called as adventitia so in adventitia there is a lack of simple squamous lining there is only layer which is the annular connective tissue so the organ uh lines with the only annular connective tissues is called as adventitia like esophagus so esophagus is not the part of peritoneum that lies outside and there the outermost lining of esophagus is the adventitia instead of serosa so these are the basic four lining uh, from which the whole gi tract is made up of from deep to superficial is mucosa submucosa muscularis and serosa and very importantly we have seen two important plexuses here that is submucosal or meesner's plexus and myenteric plexus or orbac plexus so these forms the part of ens that we'll discuss in detail in next video thank you